how's it going folks? So I'm here in the beautiful Blue Mountain Range of Northeast Oregon and I'm just in my lower pasture and those are just foothills behind me, not mountains. <laughs> um, and today we're digging a bit of chicory root because it's definitely fall here. We've been, you know, well below freezing temps and that's really when we want to be digging root. Um, now chicory is an amazing ally that you can find out here basically anywhere. If you've got any type of farmland, if you've got any type of abandoned lots, if you've got any type of just fields, she really likes places that have been abandoned. Uh, she really likes places that have been like plowed and disturbed soil. Um, and she likes compact soil too because she's, she's moving in here basically and she's all down through here. We have pretty clay heavy soil because she wants to break up and loosen the soil and that's what she does um, over a long period of time. Wind is getting hair in my face. Um, but so she's one that anybody can find. Originally she comes from um, nor you know, parts of Asia and Europe and then she migrated over into here um, and she's well naturalized now. Now traditionally, that's my guinea in the background. <laughs> a dinosaur it's a bird um is she let's wait for him to be done don't know what he's talking about he's talking about us doesn't like us <laughs> let me step closer here so we dug out this root right and she goes a really long ways and because we fill um our cattle's water trough over the way what happens is they get even bigger and she probably would have gone another foot and a half or so probably about like that but it would have got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and she has a lot of these side roots that shoot off now a lot of people confuse her for dandelion um, but you know the funny thing is she has a lot of the same similar properties as dandelion meaning she's a diuretic it'll make you piss she's <laughs> She's also really good for like um, stimulating your liver and your gallbladder and digestive health. Yeah. Rooster just chased the guinea away for me. <laughs> it's my favorite rooster. He's like, hey man, she's, she's trying to do some shit over there. Um, so she's really good for digestive health in the way that she stimulates your gallbladder, which stimulates bile production. And doing that, she supports liver function. One of your, your liver's main um, objectives in life is to take the nutrition out of your food from your stomach and store it in itself. And then when your blood passes through your liver, it releases um, minerals and nutrients into your blood. And because of that, she's considered like a, a building tonic, right? Like she helps to build blood. She helps repair a sluggish liver. She just kind of helps all of our systems get up and working optimally. And now a lot of people use chicory um, root, like ro dried and roasted a lot way they use dandelion root. They use her as a replacement or uh, they cut their coffee with it so it's not as strong. Some people believe that she helps um, prevent us from being overstimulated by caffeine, but that's likely because she's speeding up your liver's process, which is processing the caffeine out of your blood faster. Um, but she's also really good for like ulcers and just digestive aid. And she's a, I don't like using the word laxative because when people hear the word laxative, you think you're gonna like shit yourself, right? But really she's more of like, she gets your bowel tracts up and moving. More like um, if you drink dandelion, she'll make you go to the bathroom in the morning, but not quite as violent as something like coffee does. A lot of herbalists consider her a gentle enough laxative that um, it's safe to use with little ones. But what a lot of people don't know about chicory is that she has a lot of the similar and the same lactones that things like wild lettuce contains. And a lot of you might know wild lettuce as like something that people use for anxiety and pain. They use her as like an opium replacer even though <laughs> She doesn't actually have opium in her. She has some of the similar properties, but the thing that these lactones do that chicory has in her is they hit the opioid receptors in our brain. You actually have opioid receptors in your brain. And what happens is you get this surge of feel good hormones and dopamines, right? And you're really not paying attention to the pain, but she's really good in that way. So like if you're having anxiety or sleeplessness or mild pain, um, chicory root tincture in particular is pretty good for helping with that. Now the tea is not bad for the other things mentioned, but these lactones, which are basically, if you get kind of close here, check it out. I can show you, I can squeeze, I can milk some out of her. See that white there? That's the same stuff that's coming out of your, um, your wild lettuce or your dandelion or your milkweeds and it's latex is what it is, but, and it's sticky, but that latex dissipates once dried. Now it's still there, but it's like, 
you're eating a dried blueberry versus like a moist blueberry like that blueberry is going to have more flavor and juiciness right and so it, it that probably wasn't a good example it's just what i pulled out of my tired mind <laughs> but really what you want to make a tincture with fresh chicory root because you want to grab those lactones and so she's really really amazing for anybody who just needs to like calm down but also support their liver dealing with some pain some stress some digestive issues I'll say that the tea is probably better for digestive issues because she's pretty bitter a lot of people like her that way because she's got a, a similar bitterness to coffee you know like bitter but not bad bitter but if you made it real strong you got to wean your way up to that level um, but the whole plant herself now in the summertime um, all through fall we don't really have any still blooming here I probably could have made this video a few weeks ago um, but they get these bright blue blooms sometimes I've seen them almost like a pale white and are like a really dark purple but I think that's just like g genetic differences you know and like even where it's growing and maybe even what to um, what nutrients are in the soil um, but she makes these pretty easy to recognize um, stems here we can see where the blooms were and what's funny is when she's blooming you know all this is green it almost looks like it's done blooming but the truth is it just kind of or like an animals bit it off but that is just where her bloom is going to come out at and she doesn't bloom all at once so you'll see like a blue flower here and a blue flower there and you know and it just kind of works up that way um, now her greens in the spring are edible they make a pretty choice like tasty bitter spring green i actually like them better than dandelion greens but you will want to do like the quick simmer in water for like five ten minutes and then dump that water off and then saute them um, and that gets some of her tannins out of her that make her bitter and astringent i mean if you like bitter it's okay um, but you might have to work your way into liking that flavor um, and even the blooms that come on in the summertime you can use those to make tea a lot of people like making them into tea you can turn it into a tincture if you like it'll have some of the same properties but not quite um, as the root herself now even the root is technically a food traditionally in Asia and Europe um, and she's actually still a really important crop in parts of Europe um, where they grow her and the more you water her the fatter this root will get and then you can roast it up and it's kind of like a spicy spicy isn't the right word maybe peppery but she's also kind of nutty and she's just a really good root uh, not really texturally similar to burdock um, but I like her some people don't um, but she is just a really awesome ally and if you've got access to again pasture land or abandoned lots or just anywhere she likes you'll find her growing along roads a lot but be mindful maybe not to gather from there unless it's a pretty remote road plus it's really hard to dig these roots out of that really rock compacted soil but she's also really easy to grow I mean you can plant chicory in your garden and she'll she'll come up she'll come up as easy as a weed <laughs> um, but that's chicory and she is just an awesome ally for so many things and the most important thing that you take away from all of this is is that you are absolutely smart enough to do this you are completely capable and I just forgot an entire section of what I was gonna talk about <laughs> so let me loop back but you are smart enough to do this you're even maybe smart enough to remember where you're at in your place of thinking more than I am um, so okay root digging right a lot of people a lot of people get really eager and start digging their roots in like spring or they'll start digging their roots in like August right in some stuff you can dig in the spring typically roots that we dig in the spring and early summer those are more like something we're using as food right because we don't want them to go as fibrous and, and not really be um, as enjoyable to eat <clears throat> but when you're after something for her healing properties or medicinal properties you really 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 want to wait until deep fall until you've had two or three really hard frosts um, if you live somewhere where you don't get frost Give yourself like two or three weeks of like really cold as cold as it'll get for you and wait for most if not all of the plant to die back now chicory is a little bit different because she'll stay green like pretty much if I dig down through the snow I can still find her green but really what these roots are doing is they're acting like a root cellar you know how you like grow vegetables you know all season long and then you're canning them and storing them and you put them in this root cellar because you um, 
want to feed yourself all winter long, right, with your hard work? Well, these plants, they're doing the same thing. They're photosynthesizing, and as they're doing that, they're pulling up all these nutrients and minerals, and they're amassing all these sugars and starches, and that reminded me that she has a lot of inulin in her, which is a good, um, it's for digestive aid because it feeds the, it's like a prebiotic, right? It's a non-digestive starch. Sorry, magpie brain. <laughs> um, but she's pulling in all of these terpenes and these volatile oils and she's building up all of like the lactones that we talked about. And so what she does with those is she survives all winter long, right? It's her root cellar. So if you pull a root in the spring, typically it's empty, right? Because our root cellar is empty in the spring because we've been eating off of it all winter long, and then it's really weak. But if we pull her right in the fall, it's basically akin to the fact that she has stored all these nutrients and everything that we're all after for the winter, but we get her before winter happens, so she's not had a chance to eat it all. Um, and that's just a really important thing to know when you're working with um, like roots and stuff. When were they dug? When do I dig them? And fall is typically the answer if it's not something that you're just going to eat. Um, and so that's chicory. <laughs> you are definitely smart enough to do this. You're smart enough to get out here and find these plant allies and take your health back into your own hands. And you don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars. You don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars to learn this information or to retain this information. Money does not make what you know valid. Knowing it makes it valid right and you just have to get curious and get out here and look around and find these plants and just follow your own human instinct and before you know it you will have so many plant relationships it will blow your mind and it will definitely alter your health so if you like what i do if you like me forgetting things and bouncing all over in general just being human uh, make sure to like subscribe share turn on comments or turn on notifications comment if you're watching on youtube come find me on instagram if you're watching on instagram come find me on youtube um, i share a ton of stuff on both platforms that you might find helpful or interesting and and um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.